What's up, everybody? Flying Scorpion here. And this is my like 20th time recording this video. And I think I'm going to stop doing this over again at this point and just make the video. Okay, so first things first, let's gush over how cool these enemies are. So I'm going to take these enemies out and I'm going to spawn one Jugulus at around level, let's say level 20. That animation of them coming out of the ground is pretty cool. And once those bodies disappear, we can see there's a head down here and there's a head up there. And the head up there has multiple little heads. Each one of them is kind of like a finger that kind of like snaps and bites and moves around. Underneath of the legs, you can see they've got the skin on the exterior and this looks like a vertebrae with glowing orangish reddish cartilage in between the joints it's a really neat enemy very cool enemy indeed it's got uh, three main attacks and we're going to show those attacks here oh but before i go much further with this as you can see here's a notepad it's everything that's going to be talked about in the video there'll be timestamps below where you can just click on certain segments to go to those parts of the video but just to let you know that's there Let's go with the Jaguilus attacks. So we'll go here. We're going to unpause the AI and let him attack me. First thing to point out is he aggroes you from much further away than most enemies do. Looks like he's filling his throat up with these things. You can see the visual effects on his neck. And when he hits you with those, they apply slash and gas procs, which do a lot of damage over time and can kill you. We're going to be avoiding these balls that do corrosive damage. He throws those out. You can see how many things he has in his neck by looking at his body. I think that's super neat. Okay, here we go. He's filling his throat up. Here he is. He's going to throw it out. One, two. Look at the gas damage. See the gas damage up on the top right? It's destroying me. All right, there we go. Okay, so he also has another attack where he uh, shoots uh, or he puts his tentacles into the ground. Okay, let's see if that gets him to do it. Ooh, that might kill him right there. There we go. Now he's going to stagger me. As you can see, it interrupts your attacks, so I can't attack when I get staggered. There we go. Those, that can really kill you on Steel Path, that's for sure. Okay, we're going to kill that enemy. And we're going to move on. Um, we've shown the attacks. Let's go on to the health types. So, Diamond Dragulous health types. They have Infested Sinew, which is a type of armor. And on top, or underneath of that armor, they have fossilized health, 1600 fossilized health. So, so the infested sinew uh, is weak to radiation. Radiation damage deals 50% bonus damage to it, and it bypasses 50% of their damage resistance. Uh, when they're on steel path, they have an insane amount of armor, and they have, I'm pretty sure, over 90% damage resistance. So bypassing 50% of that armor sounds really good in theory, but the way that enemy armor scaling works is... It's a para it's a curve, I guess I would say. Is it a parabolic parabolic curve? I don't remember exactly, but anyhow, um, bypassing 50% of their armor with the insane amount of armor they have on a steel path doesn't actually mean that much. You're not going to deal 50% more damage or double damage or anything like that. Okay, fossilized health, weak to corrosive. So what damage type should you be using on these enemies? Oh gosh! Oh, they're doing tons of damage, and I'm dead. <laughs> I gotta turn off the AI, turn it off, turn it off. There we go. Woo. All right, okay, we're good. Viral damage, 87 damage. And as you can see, it's not going up and he's immune to viral procs. You can strip some of their armor with heat, but let's just, I'm just gonna point out to you that I'll make it very clear. It's not that useful. Let's switch to a different build here. Radiation damage. Let's go ahead and slap that there and then put electric in. There we go. So that should be radiation. 72 damage. Radiation procs do work. Okay. Pretty balanced so far. I mean, between viral and radiation, pretty similar damage type. Let's go for corrosive. Put that in there. Now we've got corrosive. 
This seems to be the way Digital Extremes is making corrosive status effect useful, is by making enemies like this immune to other status effects like Viral, which in pretty much every other case is better than corrosive. But uh, anyway, 124 damage. Right off the bat we're doing more damage, and as you stack up corrosive procs, the damage ramps up as well, all the way up to looks like 421, 483. Yeah, it looks like it goes all the way to 483. So that's pretty good. Corrosive is looking like it's doing well against these enemies. Pistols with corrosive after armor strip. Okay, but if you really want to increase your damage, the best way is to just strip their armor. Fifteen, seventeen. That's much more damage. That's a much better kill time against these enemies. If you're fighting them in the steel path, stripping their armor like that is going to make a massive difference. Fetus Deletus. Oh boy. So if you're looking at the notes and paying attention, you're probably asking, what the heck is Fetus Deletus? It's this Zaw that I built. Uh, do I have anything else on here? No. Let's go into some details on Fetus Deletus. I don't make very many Zaws. I've got maybe five Zaws in total that I've made. And I really like this one. It is pretty much entirely focused on crit on crit chance and crit damage. So as you can see, we've got a high crit chance and a high crit uh, damage multiplier, and the crit chance goes up quite a lot thanks to both Gladiator Might and, if I can find it, Blood Rush right there. So this thing gets into red crit territory very fast with this Exodia Triumph. I am going to experiment with more Exodias as I unlock more of them, so I'm in the process of grinding that out. And what else is there to say? Well, it's built for corrosive damage. So it's built specifically for th situations like this, where you're dealing with enemies that are immune to certain status effects. What else do we have up here? Pistols with roar and armor strip. Let's just get straight to the, to the chase here. Stripping their armor increases their damage and roar increases or increases your damage uh, even further. So we're going to go ahead and strip their armor, then we're going to roar, and then we're going to start shooting at them. And as you can see, we're taking them down pretty fast, but it's still, still kind of slow. Taking this long to take three of these enemies down solo in the steel path uh, would be quite challenging. Now one of the things I will say, in case anyone from Digital Extremes is watching this, is I like that some enemies are super duper tanky. And I'm talking specifically about those floating ball sack things in the Heart of Daimos. Um, because they're not really a threat, they just spawn enemies. And in fact you kind of want things that spawn more enemies. And, but if you combine the firepower of four Warframes, it really does take the combined firepower of four Warframes to take those things down in a, fa uh, a fast time frame. So that is actually kind of nice. Um, and enemies that take a while to kill is also kind of nice. Uh, by making this video, I'm not saying that I dislike tanky enemies. In fact, I really like tanky enemies. Um, it's nice to have a reason to have multiple people in a squad uh, when you can just as easily, instead of just as easily going through it solo. Um, okay. What's, uh, what else is there here? So we did the pistols. Oh, I'm, f I'm forgetting to delete this stuff as I go along. Nakana with Roar and Armor Strip. Let's go ahead and try this out. So we're going to grab some energy first. I'm going to cast that. Roar and focus on the ones that are in white. I'm kind of losing track of what's dying. We're hitting pretty hard. I might go and edit this in the... Uh, I, I didn't see how much damage I did. It looked like it was a lot. Um, okay, so uh, as you can see, that takes them down extremely fast. Uh, Nikana with Roar plus Armor Strip. Okay, so yeah, I think that's kind of the end of what I was intending to say in this video, is that this is a pretty good build for taking these enemies down quickly. Alternatively, you could do something like you could take a Rhino, if I can find him, you could do like a Rhino Roar, and then give Rhino uh, Ashes Shaking Shuriken to strip their armor. 
um, you could put that Seeking Shuriken on literally any Warframe, and you can do something like this. Uh, or you could play Ash and put Roar on it, or you could do Warcry or what, I don't know. There's so many things that you can do uh, to take these guys down. This is just one way of doing it, and uh, yeah. So I want to say thank you to a couple people that have commented on the channel. I'll get to whatever these comments are in a moment. Um, I do want to let you all know that I read every single one of your comments. I do. Um, at least right now. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get to the point where I have like like a, like a million subscribers or something. I don't know. I might not be able to do that. But right now I read every single comment. And uh, I'd like to say thank you to Bandit Swins for this comment. Uh, nice vid, keep it up, and keep being a helping hand for other people. I really appreciate that, and that helps motivate me to continue making videos like this. Uh, Bandit Swins is, uh, or was a new player to Warframe when I met him or her, and uh, we farmed some experience and also did a Grendel mission together. It was actually pretty fun, so I, I like that. Um, Empowered Oberon, so uh, you may have seen this video, Empowered Oberon. Uh, Nick McLean has shared some really interesting information here. Uh, he suggested trying Hunt and Blind Justice stance combo uh, with a, a Zaw Nakana. So that's Exodia Hunt and Blind Justice. And then I think down here, he said uh, Exodia Hunt has a 50% chance on Slam to drag enemies closer and open them up to finishers. And Blind Justice's moving block combo features easy mobility and a Slam at the end. It's really nice. That sounds really cool. So thank you for sharing that, Nick McLean. And uh, I'm, I'd like to try that out, so I might actually do that. And on the uh, very tanky Oberon build, this is published back in uh, July of 2020 this year. I had uh, this comment from Matthew. Uh, Pax Bolt only gives the efficiency for the initial cast, not uh, the duration of the ability. For example, if your third ability costs 100 energy to cast and 5 energy per second, then it'll cost 70 energy to cast and 5 energy per second if you had 30% uh, energy efficiency. And this is actually really good to know. I didn't know this, uh, and I put a heart on there, and hopefully that gets a little higher up so people can see it. Um, but this is actually really good to know. I didn't know this. Uh, there might be other people that didn't know this as well. So thank you for sharing that, Matthew. What else do we got to say? Uh, that's it. Okay, there we go. That's the whole agenda. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm going to go into the editing process now. Uh, this has been a more in-depth look at the uh, Dymo Striculus. I hope it was helpful for you. If it was, please uh, leave a like on the video. But um, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a good one.